All right, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Now, the Bible says that God, that God is a mystery. Godliness is a mystery. But the Bible, I believe the Bible reveals this mystery to us. You know, the Bible also says that the gospel is a mystery. But we wouldn't say the gospel is not revealed to us in the scriptures. You know, when studying your Bible, you have to go with what the majority says. You know, I believe that the King James Bible is the preserved Word of God. I believe it's without error. Amen. And the King James Bible comes from the text of Receptus, which is based off a majority text. They had a gathering of texts, and 90% of them said the same thing. 10% of them was off. They went with the majority. So when we're studying our Bibles and we're looking at doctrines of the Bible, we need to go with the majority text. For example, salvation. Salvation, we see the majority of Scripture say faith alone. It's just believing. It's not of works. But then you got your James 2. And then you got your Hebrews 6. Right? Do we go with the 10% or do we go with the majority? We use the majority as our basis to interpret what's off, what's wrong. Right? So you're there in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, so that who is referring to Christ Jesus. Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So we see the person is Jesus Christ that's in the form of God. And it also says that he's equal with God. There's a distinction here. And the Bible is going to teach us this distinction. And in John 5.18 it says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. So in Philippians 2, 6 there, when it says who, referring to Christ, and it says he was in the form of God and equal with God, that was referring about the Father-Son relationship. You look, look there in verse 7. It says, But made himself of no reputation... And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So I want you to notice that before Christ became in the likeness of man, before he became the form of a servant, he was a person who was in the form of God and equal to God. And John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. Same distinction. We see the Word that is with God and the Word was God, equal to God. This is referring to the Son. It says, the same was in the beginning with God. The Son has always been in the beginning with God. Amen. In verse 3 it says, all things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. So Jesus Christ is in the beginning before he became a man. Jesus Christ was the creator of all things. In Hebrews 1, it says, God, who at sundry, sundry times and diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom, referring to the Son, he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So you got those that will say that Christ was just the Word in the beginning, and He wasn't the Son. He was never called the Son. But right here it says the Son created the world. The Father went through the Son and created the world. In 1 John 1, 1 it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the Word of life. So this is referring to the Son. The Son that was in the beginning. It says in verse 2, For this... For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. So the Word of God representing our eternal life represents the Son, and the Son was manifested unto us. In verse 3 it says, That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, 
And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. You can't have fellowship with yourself. There has to be at least two people. The fellowship of the Father and the Son have always been from the beginning of time. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in Colossians 1.18 it says, And He is the head of the body, referring to Christ, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. Look there at verse 8. It says, And being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of of the cross. So we see Christ was in the form of God before the foundation of the world. He was equal with God and he was a person distinct from God and then he became a man. And verse 9 it says, "Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth." And here's going to be a little revelation of our, uh, of our mystery. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, referring to the Son, to the glory of God the Father. And in John 1.14 it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let's just say... God is one person. Let's just say God is one person. Then who did Abraham see when the Lord revealed Himself to him? Who did Abraham see? You know, the Bible says in John 4, 12, No man has seen God at any time. So if the Bible is true, then who did Abraham see? Right? Well, it only makes sense if you know that there's a Father, that there's a Son, and there's a Holy Ghost that make up God. It says, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So before the Son became flesh, before the Word of God was made manifest, He was revealing, revealing the Father to us the whole time. He's who Abraham seen, the Son of God. And in John 6, it says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. In verse 45 it says, It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. How did they know about the Father? Christ was pointing them to the Father. The Son was revealing the Father. And in verse 46, no, Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he is which of God, he hath seen the Father. So that tells me Abraham did not see the Father. Abraham did not see the Father. It says, Save he which is of God, he has seen the Father. Well, who is of God? It's re he's referring to himself. He's referring to the Son of God. If you believe not that I am He, the one that revealed God to us. It says in verse 18, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. So the Son has been the one the whole time declaring the Father to us. Declaring us who God is. And what God is. Turn to uh, Mark chapter 12. Oneness got brought to Jesus. And Jesus in the Gospels, in the Scriptures, debunks oneness. In Mark chapter 12, we're going to look at verse 28. It says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? So they're trying to trick Christ. You know, they know that Christ has been going around teaching that He's God in the flesh, that He is the Son of God. Right? Look at verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So this guy's probably thinking, All right, I got him. I got him to admit that there's only one God, which means, in their mind, one person. Right? 
Verse 30, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Verse 32, And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but He. So their God equals one person. Well, they're mistaken because why didn't they get saved? Because they didn't believe Christ was God. They didn't believe Christ was the Son of God. Verse 33, And to love Him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than whole, all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto them, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. So he says, You're not far from God. But if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. You don't have God at all. You've got to have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 35. Jesus is going to debunk one. It's right here. And Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is? the son of David. See, the scribes and the Pharisees thought that that's all Christ was, was just a physical person from David. They didn't realize that it was God. It says, For David himself said, By the Holy Ghost, so we're going to see the Trinity right here, By the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the Father, said to my Lord, the Son, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Turn to Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. So we see Christ reveals to us the mystery of godliness. God manifests in the flesh. It's the Son of God that is from the beginning that has declared the Father unto us. In John 17, verse 5, it says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee, before the world was. The Son was in the beginning. We're there in verse chapter 48, verse 12. It says, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am He. I am the first. I also am the last. Who's speaking here? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jehovah. God. Yeah. Verse 13. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. Will I call unto them? They stand up together. Who's speaking? Who created the worlds? Who created this earth? God, Jehovah, the Son. Yes. Look at verse 16. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. The Son was in the beginning. Watch this. From the time that it was, there am I, the Son. And now the Lord God, the Father, and His Spirit has sent me. Verse 17, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldst go. Remember the demons, when Jesus was casting them out, they said, I know thou art the Holy One of God. Yeah. Right? That is Jesus the whole time. So we got to go with the majority of Scripture when we're studying the Bible. And the Bible teaches that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for using me to preach your word. I just hope that this would be edified, that this will just sink into our hearts and our minds. And I just love you, and I just thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.